So the last video was kind of short, but then that was because in the end, adding power was surprisingly easy, especially the implementation that I went with. But the upgrade system, bit of a different story. So following the implementation of power, I went straight on and did all the upgrade system stuff. And it was definitely a bit of an undertaking. Before I got stuck into the code, I, as usual, planned out exactly what upgrades I wanted ahead of time in Milanote. My original plan was to have a tech tree type situation. Uh, where the player would have to unlock previous upgrades before moving on to the next one. But again, my mantra for this project is small and low scope. That's not to say I've completely written off this idea, uh, and I have laid the groundwork for allowing that, but currently that's not what I've gone with. So here you can see that we've got five types of upgrades. We've got minor, processing, deposit, tools, and conveyor upgrades. The first two, minor and processing, these work quite similarly. Similarly, weird word to say, in that unlocking them will allow you to mine or process the next material in the upgrade chain. The depository upgrades increase the value of ingots that you deliver to it, and the tools upgrade provides different bonuses for your tools so that your mining laser will mine faster, and the range of the scanner, which I've yet to implement, uh, will be increased. So with it all planned out in Milano, let's have a look how it looks in game. So it goes without saying that all of the UI and icons are very much subject to change, but this is how it's currently set up. Here I have the scriptable objects which define some of the baseline stats of the upgrade as well as its name, icon, description uh, and that can be used to update the UI. The most important things really on these scriptable objects is the upgrade number. So is it Mark 1 upgrade, Mark 2 upgrade, etc. Uh, the research cost and also the prerequisite. So here I can define either multiple abilities or just one ability that the player must know before we can unlock the upgrade. And here we've also got a research cost. So how much copper, iron, etc. will it take to research it? So as well as the metal costs, I was thinking about introducing some other kind of currency that's specifically for upgrading items. For example, like microchips or blueprints or data, I don't know, something like that. And that would have a random chance of either dropping from salvage as you mine it or possibly finding it out in the world. So like Satisfactory, which is the kind of big inspiration for me taking on this little project, uh, you can find hard drives out in the world, for example, which you could then spend alongside the metals to upgrade your stuff. If you've got any ideas for this, let me know in the comments below. Okay, so let's take a look at the code behind this system. So here we've got our ability upgrade class, and this derives from scriptable object. You can see we have our variables declared up here, including a build recipe, which is a struct that allows us to define costs as well as a list of other ability upgrades which are our prerequisites and then we've got these two methods which can be called to check whether a we can afford it and two we have met the prerequisites diving into the build recipe struct you can see that we have a can afford method this checks against the resource inventory which is a static class which basically acts as the player's inventory and this is to see whether the player holds enough of the right resources. To check the prereqs, we use a link function, and this checks whether the, each prereq is included in the known abilities of the player, which is a list over on our player upgrades class. Taking a look at the player upgrades class, you can see that we've got a list of ability upgrades, and this keeps track of all of the abilities that the player has unlocked so far. And then we also keep track of the different modifiers that the player has unlocked, which can be accessed where they're needed. In our upgrade system UI class, when a player buys an upgrade, you can see we just make a call to the player upgrade class and pass through the required information. I won't jump into every instance of how the upgrades work, but let's take a quick look at the tool upgrades. So here in our upgrade tool function, we keep track of the upgrade number of the ability. So mark one, two, three, or four. And we can also check here if the upgrade we are unlocking is mark two. And then we can set a bool called scanner unlocked equal to true. And then on our tool class, we have a current mining power property, which just returns the corresponding int based on the player's upgrade level. And we can set these on the prefab in the inspector. Here on our tool belt, when changing tools, we can check to see whether the player has unlocked the scanner tool yet or not. And if they haven't, we just skip past it when we're changing tools. So that's kind of how that all works together. So that's one example of how I'm checking what upgrades the player has. As you can see, a lot of code has had to go into the back end of this, but it's functional and working. So what more can you ask for? My main issue with this is it's not massively expandable. This is because there's some hard coded stuff in there, which I'm not a massive fan of. And I think a way around this would be to break off the abilities upgrade scriptable object class into child classes that inherit from it. And this would allow for some more custom behavior. But also, as I keep saying, the mantra for this game is small, low scope, contained. So not being expandable is probably a good thing because I won't want to put the effort in to make it expandable and then I won't just add 
loads of abilities that I don't need to add. So now we've seen the planning, the UI and the code, let's see how this actually looks in game. Okay, so currently we're cheating and all the upgrades are free to buy, but let's just pretend. So the player spawns and let's go place down a miner on this copper node. And we'll connect a belt and nothing comes out as you can see. So let's place some power down. Nope, still nothing. Let's now go to this upgrade machine here and we can buy the upgrade for copper mining. There we go, we see the machine has now started spitting out copper ore. Let's get a processor down and turn the ore into ingots. Opening the processor menu, we can see that we can't actually select these buttons because we don't know how to process copper yet. So let's go unlock that upgrade. We can now go back to our processor, select copper processing, and then the machine will start filling up. When it reaches the required amount of ore, it will start to craft an ingot. We can then deliver this ingot into the depository. If we go back to our upgrade machine, we can buy the conveyor upgrades as well as the depository upgrades to get the ingots here faster and make them worth a lot more. We can get the iron mining skill and then go mine some iron. And with our new belts, they come flying out. Okay, so there you have it. That's how I have implemented the upgrade system into my game. I'm really pleased with how this is coming along. It's been good fun, and I feel like I've made quite a good bit of progress. So let's just check Milano and see what nice, simple, easy task we've got coming up. Yo, for f as always, I'd like to just take a minute to thank my Patreons. In the 10,000 XP tier, we have Trey Briggs. And on screen now, you can see all of the wonderful 4,000 XP tier members as well. Thank you for your continued support, everyone.